Greetings from Motoga TV Studio. Alright, in today's video, the God servant Apostle Oromi Osai unveils a deep secret to the body of Christ. Do wait to listen to it as you pick the point. May God Almighty bless you. Amen. I touched a lady, she fell off. We finished service and, and went. One hour later, they came to call me that the lady I touched that fell was still on the ground. She was not breathing. So we gathered around her and they said, Pastor, we've been here. Our children have never spoken this language. This, so you came and gave them one language to speak. Now, it is that language that is responsible for this one that, that, that has died. So go communicate to your God and let them release this one. Let this one come back to life first before we hear your explanation. Because you gave our children something to, to in the night we hear. <laughs> and I started begging Jesus. I started begging him, begging Jesus. After 30 minutes, she, she stood up. We all went. Do you know why she went down like that? She was a witch. And the moment that power touched her, her spirit left her body to confer with other witches. Because in that locality, witchcraft thrived unchallenged for many years. Now, see, are you still with me? Now, if I notice you are not following me, what I will do is I will cut the syllables. I will cut it. You are going to find more intense witchcraft activity where there is more people. So in a place like a police barrack where we have so many people clustered together, you are going to find a lot of witchcraft activity. But if you come to the government residential area where we have sparsely located houses, the intensity of witchcraft in that location where the, um, 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 the population is sparse, will not be as intense as a location where the population is much. Are you with me? So the police barrack was that place. High population, high witchcraft. So I touched her, she fell on the ground. She traveled to the leader of witches in the community and said, ah, we have a problem. We have a problem. Now, let me tell you, because we conducted deliverance for the lady, eventually. Are you with me? And she got delivered. And then one day, she called me and told me a story. Well, you will decide whether you want to believe it or not. In the witchcraft coven, they put my picture on the screen before I got posted to that community. The leader of the witches put my picture on the screen and told them that this guy was coming to the place. And the reason why he was coming was to destroy all the installations of witchcraft that have been built in the terrain for many generations. So the leader of the witchcraft company now threw it open to the members of the COVID. Which one of you is going to help us be the agent to bring this guy down? So it was that lady. Oh, now you understand the one I'm talking about. Do you realize that before that time, the witchcraft that was in that location remained unchallenged until there was someone that understood a little about the ways of God. You know what Saul did? Saul went around town looking for strong men. If he sees you, are you there? Manifest any form of valor at all, he will conscript you into his army. The reason why God has not started visiting you with visions and troubling you about an assignment is because you have decided that your fire will be burning low. As long as your fire is burning low, when the master passes by, looking for people to conscript, he will pass over you many times because you have not yet established the regiment that will enthrone your spirit life over and above the processes of your mind.
So we went home. When we went home, that lady in the night went to the coven for the second time and received empowerment to come and kill me. So there were two ladies, two witches that came to visit my... This is the lady telling me. Now, you know I said you decide whether you want to believe or not. So they came to my house where I was staying and I did not give any of them my address. But they knew my address. And two of them drew near to my house and then they passed through the wall and came to the room. When they came to the room, I just finished praying and I was about to sleep. This was their own testimony, that I was lying in a pool of fire, which I did not know. Sometimes you need witches to tell you. <laughs> I was lying in a pool of fire, according to their testimony, and there were two angels standing side this side. One were here and one was here. And the description of the angel that they gave is like this fluorescent tube, that there was a light that was coming from inside of them, just like this tube bears light. Because of those two angels that were standing there, they could not go close to where I was. So mission was aborted. Now, when mission was aborted, we now gathered again for fellowship for prayer on Friday. When we gathered for fellowship on Friday, this lady was there in the company of other witches that they had teamed up, and the assignment was bring this man down. Oh. So on Friday, the leader of prayer, because we had the leader of Bible study, the, the one that traveled, he has come back. So the leader of prayer, and the prayer meetings are on Friday, he now told me that he has stepped down as prayer leader, let me be teaching them and leading them in prayer on Friday. Since the man of Wednesday, which is the Bible man, he will never allow me to preach there. So we moved to Friday. On Friday, I continued about Holy Spirit. I did another teaching about Holy Spirit and the need for a believer to speak in tongues every day. When I finished that, I asked the congregation to exercise their spirit and we began to speak in tongues with great intensity. Nobody praying for anybody, everybody praying in the spirit. And while we were praying in the spirit, this lady and her team, they sat in the form of a triangle. One person in front, two people at the edges. That's the way to unite their powers. And if by any means, during the course of my ministration, my eye hits that is comes in contact with the eye of the person at the edge, the tip of the triangle, they will transmit witchcraft power into me. And the moment that happens, I will slump. And if I slump, no matter the hospital they take me to, no drug will be able to cure my state of paralysis. Do you realize that the preacher did not know that there was an attack of the devil? Just like the average believer doesn't know. He doesn't know that it's an object of attack. He doesn't know that it's an object of warfare. He doesn't know that Satan has made plans about your life. He doesn't know. So we began to pray. We began to pray. And then at some point in my preaching, the lady now, it, we now looked into our eyes. Boom. So unfortunately, the energy they transmitted Instead of the energy to knock me down, the thing reversed and he knocked three of them down. Still yet, the preacher did not know what was going on, that there was a fight. It was when I, I went to, towards where she was to cast out the devil. That was when she now started confessing. The Bible says that the people that do know their God, I don't know, do we have... Well, well, we'll find out if we have money sessions. What I want to do, if we do have money sessions, is to teach you how to know God. And it's not intellectual. 
if I have two sessions to teach you how to know God, then I will show you how to exercise your spirit. When I teach you, I will show you the practicals. It's not as if I will just talk. No. Spiritual things are not words. The people that do know their God, they shall be what? Strong and they shall do exploits. So that kind of knowledge is so deep that you will have capacity to practice it. It's not knowledge for intellectual purposes. It's knowledge for doing. Exactly. Now there are things I can do because I have the knowledge of God. And the knowledge of God is not intellectual. The knowledge of God is experiential. Just like you read in your Bible and you say, and Adam knew his wife. That's not an intellectual kind of knowledge. It's an experiential kind of knowledge. That's how we know God. It's when your spirit experiences him. Now, I need to tell you the procedures, the step-by-step -step procedure of engaging God consistently until you begin to experience him. It is in the experience of God that we draw the knowledge of God. All right, thank you. And I hope that uh, this clip really blesses and transforms your life. If you do, don't forget to hit that subscription button and turn on your notification so that you will not miss any of our daily upload. Once again, don't forget to share and don't forget to subscribe. Until then, may God Almighty bless and keep you. Amen.